how to generate leads for B2B. Today I'm joined with Kazra and B2B, for anyone who doesn't know, is business to business. And today Kazra is going to go through how you can generate leads for business to business lead generation. So let's get started. What, in your opinion, is the best type of lead generation that you would want for B2B? Yeah, so you, you've got you've got different uh, methods of actually generating the leads. Um, obviously, you've got SEO, which is probably both of our favourites. Um, now, if you're actually going to be, again, it, the, the reason why we're going through everything is because you might either be looking to do this yourself or you might be looking to outsource it. Um, and it's important for a business owner to know every single criteria, the pros and cons stage. So with SEO um, lead generation or B2B lead generation, um, SEO is obviously one of one of the more important ones because typically a lot of searches happen on Google and when somebody is going out of their way to search for a certain product or a certain service, they're in market. That, that, so that's typically what I like to call it. So they've went out of their way, they've actually searched, I don't know, cat insurance and they, they want insurance for their cat. It's very different to doing outbound sales. So for example, if, if you're doing like telemarketing, you're actually trying to be a lot more aggressive in that sales strategy, whereas this person has actually went out of their way to actually search for that. But then you've got PPC leads, so expand on that. So PP, PPC leads is another great way of doing business to business lead generation if you know your most profitable services and keywords and if your website is set up for conversion. The amount of people that think they know the keywords and they're just going after the broad term that everybody else is going after, and not the long tail that might be able to make them more money, which is cheaper per click and actually converts better. That's what they need to start knowing. They need to start knowing how to put the negative keyword list in. They need to start making certain, like you said, the conversion rate of their website is good. If you don't know what you're doing and you're looking for B2B leads, do not run PPC in-house. I cannot stress enough the amount of people that we speak to that have spent tens of thousands of pounds on PPC and we go and look in the accounts and it's like the negative keyword list, the, the bidding on people that's looking for a job or a career in the service and the industry of what they do. So just be very careful. There's other things that come along with regards to click fraud, competitors clicking on your site to check to see who it is that's, that's kind of running the ads. So it, become, it can become very, very costly. That's not to say you can't make a lot of money by doing PPC. B2B lead generation, you can make a lot of money by doing pay-per-click and doing AdWords. There's also other places like Bing Ads that can be quite cheap to run it in there, and that still forms part of PPC. So I would say it's very risky and be very careful what you're doing, but it is definitely a way of how you can generate leads for B2B. So moving away from PPC, what about social media advertising? So social media advertising can definitely work. What one, one campaign that we always set up is, is retargeting. So if somebody has visited your website and they've not converted into an actual lead, um, we like to do retargeting. So the next time they'll go on Facebook or Instagram or even threads now, um, they will see a retargeting ad, basically pushing them back onto your website to get to get um, that that web form actually filled out. Now, the reason why we do that is because what you'll typically find is a lot of people will search for a certain service or a certain product that they're looking for, let's say um, kitchen remodeling, right? Um, but they might be on their lunch break or they might be um, just about to go into a meeting or whatever and they'll they'll say, right, okay, I'll, I'll, I'll leave that and I'll, I'll fill it out later. It's just another way of just being at the top of their head. So the next time they, they might be, it might be 5 p.m. now or 6 p.m. They might be watching a little bit of television, scrolling through, through Facebook and they're like, oh, right, yeah, well, I was actually going to fill out that form. See your ad, they, they actually click through, fill out the form, and then it's just another way of actually getting some some really high interested people back onto your website. But aside from um, social media ads, what about LinkedIn? So LinkedIn in gen general social media, there's different platforms. So like LinkedIn can be great if you know like what kind of job title that you're looking to try to go after. So prime example, we do quite a lot of work in schools. Right. So I know if I can go and connect with a lot of head teachers and bursars and school business managers, they're the three main ones for us that make the decisions of 
whether you want a new athletics track or a tennis court or a netball court. So we do a lot of outdoor facilities for all weather facilities. And if I know if I can connect with those people within the school, LinkedIn can be brilliant. But with regards to some other social media platforms like YouTube, mainly for like testimonials and case studies, if I can keep getting that out there and I'm ranking for all the products and services of what we do, that is a great way of generating leads for B2B. Like it's, it's so good and it's adding EEAT and trust signals, not just with Google, but also with your customers. It improves your conversion rate. The amount of people that come through to us and say, you built this playground for this school in Essex. We want that playground. Like, there's no like, oh, how much is it? Like, we want that playground. We love what you've done. We want that equipment. We want that design. We just want you to clone what you've done there and come and put it in our school. So when you start getting that, it's like price almost becomes irrelevant. Mm -hmm. Like, they're, they're telling you that is the product that we want. So that's another great platform. There's other social media as well. Like, you could, you could be on Instagram, you could be on Pinterest, you could be on Flickr. And like places like Pinterest and Flickr might be an underused platform, but they could be ranking for images. So kitchen remodeling and places like that, in certain industries, that could be a great driver for generating like inquiries that come through. Because when you're looking at how to generate leads for B2B, yeah. if, if you're searching kitchen remodeling in Google, the first thing you see is a load of images. Get yourself in there, try and get four or five of your images in that image carousel and you've got way more chance of getting it click through going, I really want this blue new kitchen with these bronze taps that I put on there. And that's what they might want. And then someone goes, this is, this is what I'm after. It goes through to your website. It generates you a lead from a place that could have been Flickr or Pinterest or could be going back through to your website, ranking your images and ranking your videos and sharing it on social media as well is key and they're, they're all different ways in my opinion of how i would look to generate leads if i was doing it in-house but i get asked a lot james how would you generate leads for b2b and i always talk about stay in your lane and i always say if i want a roof done i get a roofer if i want taps being done i go and get a plumber if i want cladding done i go and get a cladding company and it's the same with lead generation but I, I need to make certain I understand my KPIs. But what's your thoughts on going out? If, if people saying how to generate leads for B2B is going out and outsourcing to a B2B lead generation company. Yeah, I mean, we, we, we've worked with some brilliant business owners, um, lawyers, accountants, um, literally, you name it, we, we've worked with them. And they're really good at, at, at doing what, what they've essentially went to um university or what they've um, learned um, over the years they just don't understand marketing though um, so for example like we've we've worked with some brilliant lawyers and they they might have went to like some of the best law schools in in the uk but they just don't get taught like how to do marketing for for a law firm or they, they might know basics because they've watched a few youtube videos but they don't know the advanced strategies and ranking or doing lead generation in law is really difficult um, and the, 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 their expertise is within law. So what we always say is it's, it's probably just best to just partner up with, a, with somebody that's done it. Because if somebody that's done it for, let's say, four different law firms, they've got yeah. a really good chance of doing it for your law firm. If, if, they, if, if you're partner up with someone that's done it for seven different conservatory companies throughout the UK, if you're the eighth one, guess what? You're, you're going to get really good success rate with that. Yeah, for sure. I mean, when you're outsourcing to a B2B lead generation company, they should be an expert in what they do. If they're not, you're not choosing the right lead generation company. Mm -hmm. So go out and try to say, okay, what's your testimonials? What's your case studies specifically for in our industry? And if, and if they can prove that they're good at what they do, and like over at fatrank.com, we do a commission-based lead generation service. It guarantees a return on investment, right? So with regards, if you qualify for that, there's no better lead generation service that you can do, right? But don't throw all your eggs in one basket. Go and try and find two or three other lead generation companies, track your KPIs, maybe use a, a paper lead lead generation company, see how cheap you can get the leads for, and if you can convert them into quality leads and you get a return on investment on that, then do that as well. 
get that consistent flow of inquiries. Like Kazra mentioned, if you're a lawyer, surely you want to do, if you start look, working up your hourly rate versus a lead generation company's hourly rate and, and what the difference will be, if you go and get more business, you're going to make more profit. Go and let the experts do what they're doing and outsource to a proper B2B lead generation company. In I, I, I could turn around and you could say uh, in the comments, like, so what's the best 10 B2B lead generation companies? But the only issue with that is it completely depends on the niche in the industry. So if you want to leave a comment and ask, okay, I'm in carpet cleaning or I'm in roofing or I'm a... I am a lawyer, I am an accountant. What do you think is the best B2B lead generation company? We There's dozens within the UK that are great, absolutely great, and the, you might get a good return on investment. If if qualifying fat rank, you're guaranteed a return on investment. You only pay on the revenue share, pay on performance and commission-based lead generation. So we hope you like the video of how to generate leads for B2B. If there is any other things that we've missed, leave a comment in the comment section and let us know.